So what is the fog that I keep talking about? Well, uh, in every startup I have been in, this has occurred. And what it's supposed to be is your R&D, your executive, your executive strategy and your marketing are all supposed to be lockstep at each other. You're supposed to be a, a four-legged race and instead you end up doing this. And what happens is that your product people uh, get all freaked out because they keep band-aiding the product. It's not ready to go out. And until you finally bite the bullet and tell people no to fix your product, you're going to keep going on farther and farther behind. Your marketing people think your product people are a bunch of bedwetters. They're never going to finish anything. Meanwhile, you're out there in front of the customer and you're under pressure to get sales. And your executives are there like, we don't have time to make it perfect. We're running out of money. My investors are want to cam me. We have to do something now. And so everybody, instead of working together, essentially becomes very uh, possessive and egocentric. And so how do you uh, fix these problems? And they're not easy problems when you get behind. And that's it. Do you band-aid something together and get in front of the customer? Uh -huh. The thing is, do you really want to get in front of investors knowing it can fail? And I told you the story about the Intel display going up in flames. Uh, for that matter, uh, one of uh, our TEM students went to Silicon Valley and he joined this company that made displays for cell phones, uh, meaning the plug-in, uh, not displays, projectors. Uh, and what happened is they spent so much time planning trade shows and things like that, they didn't work on the product. Uh, they didn't come up with a packaging solution for the batteries, so they literally duct taped it on as part of their demo. Yeah, that's not going to get too much interest from people. The thing is, everybody makes promises. The CEO makes promises to his investors. Marketing people make promises to the customer. Uh, your boss... <laughs> Uh, if you're working on products, makes promises to the upper management that you can't keep. And so you're in a no-win situation. And so you have to decide uh, where is it that you're going to take the hit. And yep, this uh, slide pretty much sums it all up. And so the question is, is how do I get out of this turmoil? And so the impact on customers and your business model and everything else. This is why you have to be thinking about these things before the head of time, before you get yourself in a position that you can get yourself out of this mess. The thing is, you're always trying to move so fast. Uh, and not only that, this forgiveness of failure. Oh, it's okay. We'll, we'll fix it later. The bill comes due. And it's just like bad research. Good research is about you solve problems, bad research is you come up with mediocre solutions. And the thing is, this is really the blocking and tackling of entrepreneurship. And so you have to examine these things. Uh, some of the reasons why you get into this trouble is this is where once you know MLP, MVP comes into place. Uh, you might be thinking, too far ahead, you know, the wide receiver who doesn't think about catching the ball but is thinking about running and he drops the ball. Uh, a lot of companies focus too much on scale up. My flat panel display company, holy cow. Well, this happened after I left, but I know those guys were clowns and they unfortunately proved me right. They didn't have a product and yet they hired 300 production people because they were about to go into manufacturing. Uh, you have to do enough user testing. Just have one or two people use something isn't enough. Uh, and this is, you see why the Lean Sigma got started. Uh -huh. The thing is, where you also get in, yourself into trouble is when something goes wrong, uh, the natural solution is to create a new layer of paperwork or management. But now, all of a sudden, you're limiting your ability to be agile. So you have to reconcile that between chaos and control. Uh, so how do I get into this mess? Well, and the reason why it's important to understand why I got into these messes is that that's where you figure out how you get out of it. 
Uh, the burn rate is higher than expected. You made promises to investors. You oversold and underdelivered, and that's the killer of startups. And you're losing credibility in, uh, uh, with a lot of different people. And so the thing is, this is why when you bring in investors, you've lost control. Uh, but it has to happen in marketing. You're out there selling early as opposed to developing a market. You want to develop interest. You want to develop user groups. Uh, instead, you're out there selling and you get yourself into trouble. You oversell and underdeliver, and you have too many different customers. One person wants the 100 cc's an hour. The other person wants 0.001. That's not the same market. They're different markets. And so you're under budgeted, so you're under pressure to deliver. And then uh, I've already talked about the product development issues. An example is my flat panel display company that raised $250 million. They were married to their business model. For those of you who took 310, you did the case Thin TV, and this is exactly what happened. Uh, I had proposed to them we had a working two inch display. Cell phones at that time did not have color displays. We could have owned the entire market. And the overnight broke ground, didn't have a reliable product, and they're the biggest startup failure since uh, Solyndra at $450 million. Uh, the thing is, you have to design yourself for the long run. What's, what is success? The big thing startups don't do is think about your tranche levels. Can you produce something of value in the interim? If you notice, companies like YouTube, Groupon, what did they do? They created something else of value. Uh, get to the revenue sooner rather than later. This is a way you should design your company. You should also treat your uh, dollars like manhole covers. I mean, don't go out and buy the fancy furniture and stuff. Uh, build and earn value culture. If it's not related towards making revenue for the company or doing something better for the uh, customer, it's not worth doing. So it's about people, process, and tools. And so, uh, the thing about tools is, yes, they make you more efficient, but don't make the tools bigger than the mission. And that's where Six Sigma and all gets you into trouble. How do I hedge my bets off this? Uh, that's a technique to get me out of the fog. Make partners with your customers. Why? Because if something goes wrong, those are the people who are going to be forgiving and bail you out. They'll forgive you once, but at least it's a card you can play. You have to think about uh, when you enter gray areas, where do I want to make my mistakes? Essentially, that's going to tell you which way to go. What mistakes can you live with? Which way you can't? Am I better off confessing to the customer that we totally screwed up? Or am I better off trying to hard it, hide it and band-aid it to buy myself time? Which one of those bad options <laughs> are you better off living with? Uh, when you assess a situation, don't think about the past. Uh, brainstorm your courses of actions, figure out your risk and returns, and then you have to make a call. You have to stick with that call, and you'd be surprised how many people just don't do it. This is where your Breva book helps you. Look at the larger picture. Uh, in terms of your executive assessment, what money do you really need to keep yourselves afloat? From marketing assessment, what is it that you've promised? And guess what? You might have to throw some customers overboard. Uh, this was the big mistake when I talked about pivoting uh, with the plating company. And that's that we needed to throw some customers overboard and just con concentrate on like the billion dollar Germans. But instead, it's like this guy who would only sell one or two tools. He said, drop everything and help him. I mean, it, it didn't make any sense. Uh, and then technical assessment is always, what is it that I have right now of value? Uh, and often coming out of the fog leads to pivoting. Uh, but do you understand how you got into that situation to begin with? And are you willing to make those changes? Uh, some junctures of the fog. I Draper Labs when I made the microgyroscope. 
Uh, on one hand, it was a huge success because 40 people were on capability maintenance. It means 40 people were on the verge of getting laid off. And instead, uh, we made an alliance which saved everybody's job. On the other hand, by going for the upfront cash over the royalty, uh, we missed an opportunity to make an alliance with Motorola and made a heck of a lot more money. Uh, and then what happened is they kept pivoting between defense manufacturers and they just had the wrong culture for it. Meanwhile, everyone else came in and we got eaten by the niche eaters. Uh, Tessera, this is a company that actually did the fog correctly. And this was a company that had a lot of good patents and electronic packaging. They built up production and they found out their expertise isn't in sales and production and they were losing money and they struggled they sucked at it and then they realized well what's the core of our company what's our strength you have to understand who you are and they realized we have a lot of good patent lawyers and we have a lot of good engineers so what they do they got out of the whole business they decided to just sell ip and now they're a billion dollar market cap company just think about it. If all you're doing is licensing uh, patents, you know your your overhead's pretty low. <laughs> uh, but this was a company that understood who they were, and they were on the verge of going under, and so they made a change, and it worked out well. But the big thing about any change is you have to have the courage to do it. And Peter Thiel talked about that to zero to one. You have to coordinate your activities. You have to communicate. You have to recognize it early. You always have to be thinking ahead. And if you fall down that well, then you're going to have to make some hard choices. And you have to have the courage to do those right things. And so that's the moral of the story for the fog. <laughs>